Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot for Precision Aerobatics and Hobby King. Today we're going to do something I very seldom do. Uh, as you can see on the ground here, I've got an EDF, and today we're going to discuss flying EDFs. Um, like I said, I very seldom do it. Um, I think one of the big problems that people have when they're flying EDFs is they fly it way too much like a propeller airplane. Um, they get up, they make fast turns and things like that, and just the way a ducted fan works is you don't have instant access to power, number one, and you also have a swept wing, which means it's, it's a little riskier to do things like that at slow, you know, a hard turn at slow um, rate of speed. Sometimes it can slow down critically and tip stall. The good news is almost every new jet has been built so light and it lands a little extra slow and everything. So they're really set up very well, especially with gyros, to keep you from making a lot of mistakes. But to fly an EDF successfully involves making the flight look good as well as just knowing how to take off and land. Um, I'm going to give you a few steadfast rules that apply for every EDF, whether it's a Warbird or the easiest to fly uh, EDF there is. Uh, first and foremost, two things. Always, I mean always, keep the jet on the ground as long as you can. Um, probably the biggest mistake I see everybody make is, I mean, they immediately hold that, that elevator up and up it goes in a way. And again, most of the jets are pretty overpowered these days, so you could probably get away from it or with it. But the bottom line is number one, it looks terrible. And number two, it certainly doesn't look scale. And number three, it, it kind of leads to a, a, a takeoff and pull away from the runway that just looks ugly. What I would like you to do is go straight down the runway, let the plane lift itself off if possible, make the climb out low and smooth, and make your first turn nice and deliberate. In other words, we're going to make a one wing bank um, you know, maybe 15, 20 degrees, start pulling, and have that first turn away look perfect. And that's what we're going to start with. Here we go. First thing is a nice, long, smooth takeoff. Leave it on the ground as long as I can and let it just kind of lift itself off. Smooth, straight out turn. Pull the gear up. Look how nice that looks. And we're going to make the first turn. I generally do a four-point roll coming down the runway the first time because I think it just looks nice. Uh, second, again, always deliberately, I'm going to do a nice, low, pretty pass to show off the aircraft. Always down the runway. Now the second part of this routine is I'm going to do something that might be a bit advanced. I'm going to do a, just kind of a nice, long, slow roll because I think they look beautiful. Finishing down the runway. Now you've got a lot of choices, but you can see that every part of this flight is I'm flying straight parallel with the runway and doing very pre-planned maneuvers. Right now I'm going to do a, a nice Cuban 8. So I'm going to come up over the top. On my way down, I'm going to roll the first half of the 8. It's very windy, so I'm being buffeted around quite a bit. We're going to come up over the top again. On the way down, I'm going to finish my relatively ugly Cuban 8. But at the very least, it was deliberate. So now, one thing I always like to do is a knife edge pass. This is, of course, an advanced maneuver, and of course, you don't want to do it low unless you're really sure you can pull it off. But uh, here's my nice knife edge pass. We're going to let it come down low. Uh, wind's blowing it around, unfortunately, but I want to have a bit broader turn in because this time I'm going to do an inverted pass which again, we want it to be delivered. So I, I want it to be inverted by the time I get onto the runway so I can bring it down a little lower. Whoops, a little bit of wind here. And we're flying down the runway. Nice deliberate turn out. But this is what I mean about flying a routine 
or something that isn't just flying around willy-nilly all the time. All right, now I'm going to set up for a landing. Um, you know, there's so many things you can do with, with a jet that looks really nice. Um, uh, something that always looks good with just about every jet. Not, nothing advanced, and this is nothing but a loop. But I'm doing it in front of me, parallel to the runway. Looks really nice, and I'm going to come down and finish the loop. Multiple rolls look good, too. That kind of thing, these little you know, barrel rifle rolls look really nice. Minus or if you want to do slow rolls, they look great. Uh, uh, anything like that. My advice is always the same. We just want to look smooth. So I'm going to set up for a landing now. I'm going to drop the gear, go down. And like I always preach, straight down to our first turn. We're flying parallel to the runway, coming across the runway. Now I'm going to add my flaps. Make sure I'm not too high. Keep my throttle on until I know the jet is right where I want it to be. And now I can reduce the throttle or cut it completely, keep the nose off the ground and touch down very, very soft. Of course, this is a big important part of your routine, which is making your takeoff look really good. It kind of establishes your confidence almost immediately. Number two is to be smoother than you would normally fly a prop plane. Uh, make the turns, make the ailerons roll a little slower. They just look better and every part of your flight looks better. Number three, every nice maneuver you can do. Do your best to do it at show center and as close and upfront as possible so not only the audience can enjoy but it really highlights your maneuver. Okay, I guess I repeat this a little too much but number four is at least plan your flight a little bit. It is so helpful. Finally number five, a long nice low approach to where you can slow the plane down and land it really nicely like this. In fact, I see it all the time and even pilots who should know better. In fact, recently I saw a, a video of a friend of mine with the B2 um, had what he said was a pro pilot and as I was watching him land and when you know it, high steep approach, short and by the time he hit the ground it looked like he damaged the gear because the plane was bouncing and it looked like a little crash. My contention as always is that that is pointless. Literally just fly the plane out a little bit further and a little bit lower and you will not have these problems 90% of the time.